Illuvium, the studio that is going to take the gaming world by storm and leave all their competitors in the dust. It is going to be a true crossover of Pokemon, Teamfight Tactics, and Clash of Clans. They are taking the best parts of all of these games and genres and just literally molding them into one and building a huge universe out of it. All these games are going to be interoperable. You can jump from here to there to the next one and take all of your assets with you. They're only going to be starting with these three games, but overall they want to build out nine fully fledged games. That's right, nine games. So if you love this game and you love what it looks like, you could essentially set yourself up and play for the next 10 years and not get bored. So in the first three games, they're going to take you into this enormous and immersive overworld where you go and capture creatures named Alluvials. Alluvium is going to be holding themselves to this triple A grade quality from gameplay to graphics to the backstory and lore. The gameplay and graphics you're going to see a whole lot of during this video and I'm going to be explaining as much as I know to you as simple form as I can. But the lore and backstory, well, hardly anyone knows anything and that is the whole key. We are all going to be learning the story of the game as we play. As we go through, we can only get to a certain point till other people unlock to get further. So we are going to be playing this as a whole community and I'm going to be there showing you what I find. So if you're liking the sound of this, please stick around because there is going to be a whole, whole lot more that I'm going to be showing you and telling you about this. So let's get into it. Alrighty, let's get into those three games I was talking about. The first one is going to be that overworld. You're going to go out and traverse through eight gigantic and unique regions to unlock the story and further the path forward to unlock lore and backstory on how and why you crash landed on this planet. On your way, you will capture and level up alluvials much like you would in Pokemon. To upgrade these alluvials to the next stage, you're going to have to fuse three of the same alluvial to upgrade its stage. There is three stages, so if you need to upgrade all the way to stage three, you're going to be burning a lot of alluvials. So combining these three elements, you're going to be building your team and roster as you further yourself into the game. The alluvials have types like water, fire, earth, air and nature. So to add to the complexity, they also have a class attached to them, which is fighter, bulwark, scion, rogue and empath. As they progress to the next stage, they either gain an affinity or a class to be then combined with the original class and affinity. This then becomes a composite affinity and class. So this just adds to the complexity and uniqueness that each alluvial is going to have when you go and battle with it. So as you catch them, all of the alluvials are going to have variable stats. To catch one of the best or to catch a perfect alluvial is nearly going to be impossible. I believe there's only going to be like one perfect alluvial in the whole game that any person could ever catch. And to add on top of this also, there's going to be holographic and dark holographic alluvials, which are going to be like a very, very small chance of even finding. And then even trying to catch them is going to be super, super hard as they are caught. That specific alluvial by everyone in the universe, their capture rate and difficulty of capture goes up. So maybe they start out as 10% trying to flee. By the end, they're at like 80% and they're very hard to catch. And then one day, yes, one day this set, first set is never going to be able to be caught again. As soon as this first Genesis set is finished, you cannot go into the overworld and catch them again. It will only be the next set. Think about if you're playing Pokemon, you're playing Pokemon Red from the start and you caught a Charmander from back then and no one ever, ever again is able to capture a Charmander. Think about how rare these alluvials are going to be one, two years down the track, three, four years, ten years down the track. Does that not excite you? So the second game is the way that you're going to be battling throughout the overworld when you go into an instance to try and capture the alluvials. It is an auto battler style game like Team Fight Tactics, where the strategy comes before the battle and not during. You place your alluvials on the board and try and counter your opponent's positions to gain the upper hand in battle. In the arena, which is separate to the overworld, it's going to be split up into three different play styles at the start. I believe they're going to open this up into so, so many more play styles down the track there's like infinite ways that they can build this but these three styles will suit any player you've got a pve survival mode which is available now which is pb2 if you look down in the description below there is a register link down there i would love it if you click through on that get on 
click on that and have a go see if you can get in it is an amazing game and they're only just going to build on it from there so this is where you face the computer you practice and hone your skills whilst trying to climb the daily ladder for rewards then there is two pvp modes at first it's similar to how Pokemon is with their two modes. There's an Ascendant Arena, which brings all the Alluvials to the same level. So if you have a Ramfire, the other team has a Ramfire, they are equal. It is based on skill rather than the stats of those individual Alluvials. And then the last mode, this is the Leviathan Arena, where the big boy whales come in and your Alluvials have those variable stats that I was talking about before. If you have that really, really OP Ramfire, they are going to be really OP in this game mode. If they are crap and have terrible stats, they're going to be useless. So choose your playstyle wisely. There is going to be rewards for it all and esports is on their radar. They've already talked about giving out some of the biggest prize pools in esports history because they have so much money backing them. So that is game number two. Let's head over to game number three, which is a totally different style of game. So at first, this game was just called a side game. It is Alluvium Zero. It is a city builder. It's just going to be similar to Clash of Clans, and it's going to be on your phone. You can also play on your computer, but it's mainly a phone game. So you go out, you pick your region that you want to set up your land and build away, trying to optimize your land as much as possible so it can generate as much fuel as efficiently as possible. So Alluvium Zero is going to be the backbone of all the Alluvium games that are getting released now and into the future that they are planning. The three types of fuel that you will be generating will be used in every game that comes into the Alluvium universe. In addition to fuel, Alluvium Zero will be the starting point for every skin and blueprint made within all games with blueprints being founded in the Alluvium Zero from scanning alluvials that run past your land. All of these games are free to play to a certain extent, with 75, yes, 75 alluvials that are free to play. You are able to find and capture them and do what you please with these alluvials. You can take them into your arena and you can battle them with other people. But once you are hooked and you dive into the full game, there is over 150 alluvials on offer in just this first Genesis set and thousands, they reckon, thousands of hours of gameplay to grind out to get that perfect deck. It might not even be perfect, but to get those good variable stat alluvials, you will need to play for a long time. The grind is going to be real. It's not going to be like those Pokemon games where you play 100 hours or finish the game in 50 hours and then you just go run around and do all the extra stuff for 100. No, you will be wanting to play more and more. So get that perfect deck, head over to the arena with those alluvials you've just caught and beat your friends or just try and climb that leaderboard each day. And then even maybe you may even get into an esports tournament one day and then win yourself some money back. So all of the future games are also going to be free to play. Any alluvial that you have caught in the overworld will be used in those games in some way that makes sense. Some games are already on the radar, like an FPS and a Mario Kart style driving games with the alluvials either acting as like your armor, weapon or cart that you drive. If this video and gameplay has tickled your fancy, please hit that subscribe and like button so you can keep up to date with every video that I post. I'm posting multiple videos per week and as gameplay starts, then I'll be streaming and much, much more gameplay videos will be coming out. And if you want to dive deeper into Alluvium, I'm going to be doing a video very soon that I'm going to be putting on this finishing page. But click on that and I will dive deeper into where Alluvium is going and why I'm even more bullish on it. This is only scratching the surface, guys. Wait till you see what is coming. I will catch you in that video soon.